it seems to me like Canadian politics have become more and more entertaining than Canadian cable television with Justin Trudeau's latest green slash fan scandal, whose chairperson of the fan have already been found guilty of violations. The Prime Minister has paralyzed Parliament by refusing your ruling directing his government to turn over evidence in the $400 million green slush fund scandal that the, ver the Auditor General says involves 186 conflicts of interest, wow. with the chair of the fund found guilty. The ethics commissioner appointed by this government has found the chair of the fund in violation of the law. Guilty. The Auditor General, also appointed by this government, says there were 186 conflicts of interest <coughs> involving Liberal appointees giving millions of dollars to their own companies. Yeah. $400 million, potential criminality according to the main whistleblower in the scandal. Any other employer would tur voluntarily turn over all the evidence to the police yeah. if it had been ripped off by its own staff. What is the Prime Minister hiding? Yeah. Comment down below and let me know which scandal was your favorite. If you haven't heard or read Wilson's Rebels book, Indian in the Cabinet, then you may never know who Justin Trudeau truly really is. Starting off with my number five, Justin Trudeau on punish scandal is the SNC leveling scandal. Remember when the now resigned Parliament of Canada's Ethics Commissioner Mario Dion found that Justin Trudeau improperly influenced the Minister of Justice and Attorney General Wilson Rebolt to intervene in a criminal case against Quebec construction company SNC Lavalin because an election was coming that October and Justin Trudeau did not want to offend his Quebec voters and asked Wilson Rebolt to cut a deal with SNC Lavalin which she refused. In February 2019, Wilson Rebolt said, Justin Trudeau suggested that his office was telling the truth about the SAC Lavalin affair and her office wasn't. In that moment, I know he wanted me to lie to attest that what had occurred had not occurred. That's her words, <laughs> not mine. Justin Trudeau eventually forced the resignation of Wilson Rebolt and then President of the Treasury Board, Jane Philpott. I made the difficult decision to remove Ms. Wilson-Raybolt and Dr. Philpott from the Liberal Caucus. Wilson Raybolt wrote in her book that her relationship with Justin Trudeau deteriorated right at one point in March 2019 after Trudeau called her to a meeting to convince her to move on from the SNC affair. She blurred out, I wish I had never met you. Justin Trudeau said he was only trying to protect Canadian jobs and avoid negative consequences of a criminal prosecution of a major employer. Is he really telling the truth? Let's take a look. Sources say Wilson Raybould wanted Trudeau to fire his principal secretary, Gerald Butts, the clerk of the Privy Council, Michael Wernick, and PMO senior advisor, Mathieu Bouchard. Sources say Wilson Raybould made this clear to the Prime Minister and his staff in a series of conversations in Vancouver in the days before she quit Cabinet. Butts was never fired. He resigned of his own accord despite testifying he never pressured Wilson Raybould. Wernick announced his retirement after intense criticism of his testimony at the Justice Committee. Wilson Raybould sought assurances that new Attorney General David Lametti would not direct prosecutors to give SNC Lavalin a deferred prosecution agreement. And she wanted the Prime Minister to admit, either to caucus or in public, that his office acted inappropriately in its attempts to convince her to consider granting SNC Lavalin a DPA. The Prime Minister and his Chief of Staff, Katie Telford, were the point people. They scrambled MPs they believed to be close to Wilson Raybould and Philpott to help the talks. The Liberal BC caucus, including cabinet ministers, was heavily involved in reaching out. There have been so many conversations going on amongst caucus members, amongst regional caucuses, with uh, Ms. Wilson Raybald uh, with with Ms. Philpott. Sources say the efforts continued until Monday, the day before the caucus expulsion. But by that point, it was clear a compromise was almost impossible. In 2023, 
the commissioner of the RCMP, Michael de Young, who is from Chambly, Quebec, investigated the Quebec-based SNC Lavaline and had this to say, quote, I wouldn't say justice didn't play out, but I would say when you don't have access to all the information, it's sometimes challenging, unquote. Hmm. Why did the RCMP not have access to the information? Have you ever personally been contacted by the RCMP about the SNC-Lavalin affair? No, I have not. But for the former vice president of SNC-Lavalin, Sami Bobavi, was contacted and sentenced to eight and a half years in prison. And his executive vice president, Norman Maureen, was contacted and sentenced to two and a half years in prison. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My number four, Justin Trudeau on punish scandal, is to read charity scandal. We was awarded $912 million to manage the Canada Student Service Grant Program. This was part of a $9 billion COVID-19 financial aid for post-secondary students. For every thousand hours work, the student is eligible for $1,000 and must volunteer for 500 hours to receive the full grant. The problem is, we charity paid family members of the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to appear at their events. We charity allegedly paid approximately $425,000 to Trudeau's family, including expenses. Thanks to Fifth Estate Good Investigation, Canadians found out what really happened. In 2019, the WE College was opened. Kenya's First Lady was there, as were former Canadian Prime Minister Kim Campbell and Margaret Trudeau, flown in for the occasion. Okay. Bringing the Prime Minister's mother to Kenya might have seemed like a public relations dream come true for the WE organization. This is WE Day in London, England. And their relationship with the Trudeaus could not have been stronger. Hello, we day. Hi. Margaret Trudeau was flown to the event along with the Prime Minister's daughter, Ella Grace. And thank my grandma for bringing me out here. I'm really happy. Thank you. <laughs> Please welcome Sophie we Gregor Trudeau. And the Prime Minister's wife flew in for the event too. The global pandemic exploded. We organization powered by packed arena events and volunteer trips was decimated. More than 300 employees were laid off in March. But then a lifeline. Today, we're launching the new Canada Student Service Grant. Kielbergers were handed a contract worth millions to run a half billion dollar program, paying students for volunteer hours, triggering a political feeding frenzy. You and your family work with the WE Charity. Is there not a perception of conflict there, or at least favoritism in going with this organization. The WE organization is uh, the only organization in Canada that has the scale and the ability to deliver volunteer opportunities uh, for young people right across the country. Then from bad to worse. I made a mistake in not recusing myself immediately from the discussions, given uh, our family's history. And I'm sincerely sorry about not having done that. The contract was cancelled as Trudeau publicly distanced himself from the WE organization. And then Canada Land was leaked this invoice, paid to Margaret Trudeau by the WE charity Free the Children for $7,500. The same day Justin Trudeau and Sophie Gregoire were on the stage at the WE Day UN in New York. Under pressure, the WE organization now admitted Margaret Trudeau spoke at some 28 events and that she was paid $180,000 in speaking fees and another $164,000 in expenses. Alexandra Sasha Trudeau had been paid $36,000 for nine WE events. After that controversy, rather than offering the contract to other competitors, the Trudeau government abandoned the Canada Student Service Grant Program, leaving more than 35,000 students' applications in limbo. My number three on punish Trudeau scandal is the Trudeau Cash for Access scandal. Justin Trudeau had been attending Cash for Access events at the homes of wealthy Chinese Canadians in Toronto and Vancouver. Guests 
would pay up to $1,500 per ticket to meet Justin Trudeau in person at the private Toronto home owned by Benson Wang, the chair of the Chinese Business Chamber of Canada. Yet the Prime Minister himself hosted a cash for access event with Chinese billionaires. Two of those billionaires then made a $1 million donation right. to the Trudeau Foundation right. a week Brooklyn. later. Unbelievable. Now we're not talking hey. about Brooklyn. fundraising laws. So why did the Prime Minister break his word, break his rules, and break his promise? The Minister's own guidelines say there should be no preferential access to government or appearance of preferential access because individuals have made financial contributions. Well, so much for that, Mr. Speaker. The cash for access controversy is about fundraisers held in private homes with donors paying as much as $1,500 for a chance to meet Trudeau. Wealthy business people got direct access to him and some of his ministers. The Prime Minister admits he is lobbied at these things but says not influenced. The decisions I take uh, in government are ones based on what is right for Canadians and not on, uh, on uh, what an a, uh, uh, individual in a, in a fundraiser might say. Now the Prime Minister's office has decided to lift the secrecy from the fundraisers, promising a new law to make sure all the events are held in places accessible to the public, advertised so anyone can attend, and reported to the public in a time manner. It means the Liberals will still hold fundraisers, but now anyone who can afford it can go. There are already guidelines that say no one can have preferential access to government ministers in exchange for donations, but promising a new law is clearly an effort to calm the fuss over fundraising. Last fall, the Federal Ethics Commissioner Mary Dawson said she would question the Prime Minister over the cash for access issue, a practice she described as not very savoury. But her office wouldn't confirm today whether she's asked those questions or received any answer. On the 7th of November 2016, Trudeau attended a cash for access fundraiser with over 80 guests at the West Vancouver mansion of a British Columbia real estate developer. At that event, the developer reportedly urged Trudeau to allow a Chinese investment in Canadian seniors care that was under review by the federal government. Later that same month, Chinese insurance firm Ang Bang Insurance Group completed its purchase of a majority stake in a Vancouver-based senior care company, Retirement Concepts, for over $1 billion. My number two, Justin Trudeau on Punish Scandal, is the Arrive Scam Scandal. The ArriveCan app was developed by two people from a Canadian consulting firm, GC Strategies, Christian Firth and Darren Anthony. The app was poorly designed and was updated 177 times to fix bugs, which caused more than 10,000 Canadians to be quarantined, even though they have proof of vaccination. The federal government spent close to $60 million dollars with 23 separate subcontractors. GC Strategies were the ones responsible for creating the qualifications for procurement process of the contract since 2015. GC Strategies procured more than 129 federal government contracts worth $239 million. The Auditor General of Canada Kerry Hogan released a shocking finding that forced a parliamentary inquiry into this problem. I will discuss our findings, but first, I have to say that I am deeply concerned by what this audit didn't find. We didn't find records to accurately show how much was spent on what, who did the work, or how and why contracting decisions were made. And that paper trail should have existed. By piecing together available information, we estimated that Arrive can cost approximately $59.5 million. Pierre Polyev asked to pass a motion for Justin Trudeau to recover monies within 100 days from the Arrive Can app developers and to table a motion in the House proving that taxpayers' monies will be refunded. To uh, GC Strategies, uh, Mr. Firth, um, how many employees do you have? We have two employees, myself and my business partner. Okay. 
and your contract with the Government of Canada lists your work as a residential address. Is that correct? I don't need the address, but is that correct? Yeah, we had a uh, physical location downtown from 2015 to 2020, and we now have home offices. Without getting into your, uh, into your detailed CV, are, are you programmers or app designers yourselves? Absolutely not. We are, we are IT recruiters. Prime Minister's arrive scam is now flailing out of control. Today, revelations from a Joël Denis Bellevance that one arrive scan company received a quarter of a billion dollars in contracts. Let's get this straight. It's a company with four employees headquartered in the basement of a tiny cottage. They got IT contracts even though they admit they do no IT work. A quarter of a billion dollars? W T. Yes. I'm going to ask the Honourable uh, uh, Opposition Leader please to, uh, to withdraw that, that comment and to use uh, parliamentary language, please. Where's the funds? So let's recap. A company that had never before received contracts from the federal government started getting an avalanche of contracts just three weeks after this Prime Minister wow. took office. Wow. Can the Prime Minister explain why this suspicious company started getting these contracts exactly 21 days after he took office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The federal government says it has suspended all of its contracts with GC Strategies, the small IT company at the heart of the Auditor General's damning report. As first reported in La Presse, the federal government has awarded GC Strategies more than 100 contracts. Radio Canada verified those contracts today, finding they have amounted to more than $239 million since 2015. Overall, 66% of the company's federal contracts came from the Canada Border Services Agency. And we found out today that all federal government contracts with GC Strategies were suspended this November. In a letter to the RCMP, Conservative leader Pierre Polyev asked it to immediately expand its existing criminal investigation into the development of the app. The Prime Minister has said the RCMP and CBSA are conducting internal investigations into any alleged wrongdoing linked to the app, but does not, that does not seem to be enough for opposition leaders. Christian Forbes said that the media reports about his company are false. He said his company kept... $2.5 million commission for its work over two years, with the rest of the money went to other contractors hired to help develop the app. My number one, Justin Trudeau on Punished Scandal, is the Phoenix Pay System Scandal. The Phoenix Pay System is a payroll processing system for Canadian federal government employees located in Miramichi, New Brunswick. Initially, it was not a Justin Trudeau problem. It was inherited from outgoing Prime Minister Stephen Harper. The Fairness Bay system was set up by IBM, meant to replace Canada's 40-year-old system. When Stephen Harper left, the Fairness system was not up and running, but when Justin Trudeau took over, there were so many problems that the Miramichi workers advised that the system was not ready and there the workers needed more time. But Justin Trudeau allegedly, I'm saying allegedly, wanted to move forward. In 2018, up to 80% of the federal government's 290,000 public workers got underpayments or overpayments or some never got no payments at all. The Standing Senate Committee of the National Finance did an investigation in which they called fairness a failure and an international embarrassment. Instead of saving $70 million a year as planned, the report said that the cost of taxpayers to fix fairness problems could reach a total of $2.2 billion by 2023. Factually, as of today, the fairness pay system have cost the federal government and taxpayers three. $0.5 billion. Well, the federal government is again throwing nearly a billion dollars at dealing with the beleaguered Phoenix pay system and the potential fix could still be years away. The system 
has led to nothing but pay problems for hundreds of thousands of public service workers since it was rolled out eight years ago. CTV's Katie Griffin has more on this tonight. Katie. Patricia, the system brought in to save the government millions of dollars has now cost billions. An update this week revealing the new system to replace Phoenix is on the way, but the backlog of cases has to be cleared first, and that may not happen until next year. Eight years after its rollout, the problems with the Phoenix pay system continue with new cases still piling up. We've identified 112,000 complex backlog transactions that we will tackle this fiscal year. Those cases representing just a fraction of the number of real people who have been impacted either getting paid too much, too little, or not at all. The federal government plans to bring in Dayforce, a new human resources and payroll system that's undergoing testing. But it's not ready yet and won't be implemented all at once. Before we transition a department, there are certain things that need to be in place. That department needs an up-to-date org chart, for example. It needs to have a backlog that's cleared. We have to manage intake. If, if we, we do not get to a point where we rustle intake to the ground, um, the backlog management is a problem. The federal government expects to spend another $963 million on dealing with the debacle this year. More than 200 compensation advisors have been assigned to handle the cases, with a goal of clearing the backlog by March 2025. To date, the system designed to save the federal government money has cost $3.5 billion and counting. Since 2022, Public Services and Procurement Canada has been testing their force. Testing has shown that their force is a technical viable option for the next modern HR and PS system. The question is, who is responsible for the billions of dollars wasted on the Phoenix based system? Let me know in the comments down below. Is it Stephen Harper or Justin Trudeau? In 2011, Stephen Harper contract with IBM for the system was $5.7 million, which ballooned to $185 million before he leave office. Then Justin Trudeau took over and it ballooned to a cost of $3.5 billion. In a year or less, Pierre Polyev will take office. Can he fix it? How many prime ministers are going to waste money to save us money? Hey, my name is Mark. Thank you for watching. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.